How's it going guys? So today, well, we're gonna do the diff drop on the Sequoia. But, we got some, something's going on with the old Sequoia in the front. And nothing seems loose. You know, first thing he always thinks of wheel spacers. And I didn't notice until I got like 60 miles an hour and above, I'm like, oh, wheel spacers loose, great. But, I don't think it is. I think it's that front CB axle. I did the, I replaced the driver's side and the driver's side strut. I did not do the passenger side yet, but meaning to get to it. I put it off because the strut with those lift blocks is a freaking nightmare getting it back in there. And we had to cut the old strut out. Uh, the nut was so rusted on the top. I had to cut it off with the Sawzall. It was a huge pain. Um, so what we're gonna do today, we're gonna put the diff drop in. We bought a, we're not affiliated with them yet. Wink, wink. Um, Supreme Suspensions uh, diff drop. So it has the hardened bolts. It has the one inch spacers. Holy. Okay, sorry about that. The phone was ringing. So we have the diff drop kit here. Like I said, hardened bolts, one inch spacers. And that's going to fix our angle. They sent us the little bolts are for the skid plate, which we don't even run that anymore. And they gave us little spacers for that. Uh, the skid plate's on a first gen. Uh, Tundra Sequoia, in my opinion, you gotta take it off every time you change the oil, or oil runs down in it. I did, it's just easier to run without it. You're not collecting a bunch of junk under it, and uh, been running without this one for 200,000 miles. I've never hit anything that went up and busted the radiator. Uh, you'd have to hit something pretty, pretty catastrophic, and it's probably not going to help you at that point anyway. So. That being said, I'll show you the angles right now on the CV axles. We're going to get underneath it. We're going to install this kit. And then later today, I'm going to do just bite the bullet and do the struts. Now, I'm debating on two things on the Sequoia about getting the whole new cross member. I'll have to show you here. I don't know if you can even see. Can you even see? No. Hold on. Okay, so here's. Here's what we're at here. Here's the front diff. How this works, there's a big bolt there. There's a big bolt there. And that's going to tilt, basically, essentially, the front of the differential down. And it can't go too far down because on the Sequoia, it's already pretty far down, if you know what I mean. I don't know if there's gonna be enough space in there or not for this to work, but it should, maybe. Um, but anyhow, so there's a nut on top, we'll impact those out, put the one in spacers, and that's not a big deal. Okay, so here, without that kit installed, here's the CV axles. And you can see the angle is nasty, nasty on there with a three inch lift. And the angle is also nasty, you probably can't even see that. Um, so that's the old one, you can see it ripped the boot, flung the grease out. Now, here's the new one. And it's all freaking jacked up too. Now what we're gonna do, we're gonna go and cut that clamp off the bottom, and we're gonna slide that boot down so it's not all bound up. So we're hoping um, between that, this has only been on there for just a couple hundred miles. Uh, between that and the diff drop, maybe this thing isn't gonna eat up CV axles real bad. But the next thing is, I don't know if you can even see it or not. Yeah, let me get a light, different kind of light. Okay, so right now, the spindle, you can see that, the spindle is crammed into the spring. Now it's lifted off the ground, when it's down, it's barely off the spring, so it's constantly banging on that spindle, it's banging on the spring. Um, something else too, you can see the angle, if you can see that or not, the angle back here on the tie rods is like torqued down real hard and that eats your tie rods up real fast. So the trick to that is you could actually buy a lift that comes with a new subframe piece right here and it's spaced down. So that gives you basically the right angles on your control arms. That gives you everything you need for your uh, tie rods. That lowers the rack and then some of the kits come with new spindles. I Here's what I don't know. I don't know if I need to put different control arms, the tubular control arms, so it doesn't hit now, or if 
I don't get the lift with the spindles. I'm still going to be hitting up there. There's a lot of variables to it. I think I probably will be hitting up there still. Um, so I think I'm going to have to buy either the lift with the spindles, which is a lot more money, or the lift and new upper control arms to fix that problem. And uh, But if we buy a lift that's going to have the whole subframe replaced, I mean, I'm not going to buy a no girly lift. We're going to buy a a good five or six inch lift or maybe more you're gonna make it worth doing if we're gonna do it right so yeah let's go ahead and install these spacers get this differential tilted correctly and then I'll do the other maintenance on it later on today all right hopefully you can see me we're going to start off by supporting the diff go I'm not sure size it's a 19 19 top and bottom Kind of rusty. You can even see that. Kind of crispy. Okay. Now, remember, all right, we're gonna have to reuse these big washers on these bolts. And that bolt looks pretty clean. Can you even see? Can you even see? Maybe. That bolt looks pretty clean. This one's pretty crispy. But not like it's gonna break or anything, it's just getting kind of rusty. Within normal spec or rusty, I guess. Okay. Pull all that stuff out of there. Now, let's let this jack down. Looks like it's almost down far enough. Put it all the way down. We're gonna get <clears throat> maybe. Yeah, it just barely fits. We're gonna reuse your washer like so. bolts are actually bigger that'd be a 21 and the nut was a probably a 21 too but a 7 8 we're going to use I don't have a 21 wrench for 7 8 up well let's not tighten that up yet let's put the other bolt in Where's my pry bar? Yeah, that's not really needed. <laughs> it's a tight fit. We're still good. Eighth of an inch off. There we are. And the 
course, there's a little bump that goes up. You go in the slot. That started too. Okay. We'll go on top of their 7 8 wrench. And we need to turn this impact down. We don't need. thing does do about not quite a hundred pounds on low plenty good Tight spot, boys. Tight spot. Oil pan's actually in the way, putting that back on. Put the box in. Yeah, so the driver's side, on the Tundra might be different on the Sequoia, the box in, we couldn't get it on top of the bolt that's actually hitting the oil pan. We had to flip it around and use the open end of the 7 8 So there we're installed. Now let's see if that actually truly did any good. I mean, I'm going to tell you right now, not freaking much it didn't. So there we are installed. You can see the spacer right there. We're hanging down lower here, but those angles though are still pretty jacked. I'm not so sure that did much of anything. To be totally honest with you. Maybe a little bit, maybe. But not enough. I mean, still gonna eat up CV axles real bad. So I don't know, we'll see. So the problem is it didn't lower the rear of the differential, only the front, it only rolled it forward. So, um, I mean, that's gotta change your dry shaft angle for the better, I guess, a little bit. You know, I don't know. It's like 20 some dollars, I'll put a link in the description. I'm sure it helped a little bit. It probably on two inch spacers, it'd be perfect. On three inch spacers, it's still not enough help. We're gonna have to do something else. I'm gonna have to call one of the lift companies to get something worked out for this thing on a bigger lift. But if we do the front, we have to do the back, which means different springs. At this point, to go three higher than three inches, you're gonna take at least it's over a thousand dollars. It's probably thirteen or fourteen hundred bucks. Don't want to put fourteen hundred dollars in a Sequoia with three hundred ninety thousand miles on it. I don't know. I mean, it seems like it runs fine. It's not worn out of that mileage, but we'll see. We'll see how it works. That's it for today, guys. Thanks for watching. Hope this helps, and we'll see you later.